please the court. Mr. Enriquez has maintained his innocence and he continues to maintain his innocence. He would like the opportunity and has requested to be heard by your honor. Okay, certainly. Mr. Enriquez, you may address the court at this time if you so wish. Your Honor, first thing I'd like to say is that I am innocent of these killings. I did not commit any of these murders that I was found guilty of. I feel that nothing here has been proven. There's been a lot of lies, a lot of deceptions. If anybody's guilty of a crime in this courtroom, it's this man, Andrew Tolte, who sits here for lying and deceiving the people of the Bronx, for lying to the poor families who stood there crying while they read letters of what they believe I did because of what he said. He's paid people to lie. They've come here and lied against me, people that were close to me, that I could never understand why they lied. To this day, I can't imagine why until I found out the reason why. <sighs> For the families, I'd like to say to Shamira Bello's mother, you didn't take your daughter's life. She was a wonderful person, and all I wanted my nephew was to be with her, and my nephew knows her very well. Never did I hurt Shamira Bello, and I did not take her life. Mr. And Mrs. Rodriguez. Did she get five famous things shit all the time? Mr. and Mrs. Rodriguez. But then we get fed in the leg and I see how long! Shut up, I'm gonna say that. Mira, cabrona, I just wanna go to the next fenda! No, la sucia, mira! Mr. Rodriguez and Mrs. Rodriguez, I'd like to say that I knew Lisa and I dated Lisa. She was a wonderful person. We've had some problems with the audio at this point and the feed coming out of the courtroom live this afternoon. Again, it's the sentencing of Alex Enriquez. Alex Enriquez now standing up and directing his comments to the court as part of this sentencing procedure. We saw first that the defense attorney argued that the jury verdict should be thrown out. That application was denied. We then saw prosecutor Ed Talty ask that the maximum sentences allowable by law be imposed on the defendant. We then also saw as family members of the victims had their opportunity to speak before the judge. Alex Enriquez then for the first time in this courtroom, he had spoken in the past before the trial began, but for the first time in this courtroom he then stood and addressed the court. Started off by indicating to the judge that he was innocent of these killings, that he had nothing to do with them. Interestingly, he did not testify during the course of his trial. He did not take the stand and say that then. There are obviously a variety of strategic reasons that could support that decision. Clearly, the defense was concerned that if he did testify, the jury would hear about his prior convictions because, generally speaking, they would not have known about that otherwise. Here now, he stands up and he says to this judge that he is innocent. He also then has accused the prosecutor as being the man in this courtroom who is guilty. He claimed that Prosecutor Ed Talty has been lying. He claimed that the prosecutor paid for witnesses, and he claimed that it was the prosecutor that should be held responsible for lying to the families of these victims. Then he began to say to the family members themselves that he was innocent. He did not take the lives of any of their children. And as he began those comments, we had another emotional explosion in this courtroom as the family members began to reply, again emotionally, to his protestations that he had nothing to do with the killings of their children. Let's go back now and we believe the audio has been repaired. As we indicated to you, we had lost the sound coming out of that courtroom. We have it now. Let's go back. She now. has to live with her lies. We all lied. And she's lied. For Jen Anthony, I hope you find the guts to come forward someday and speak the truth. To tell the court what Mr. Tolti and the police did to him. Lie to him, tell him I was accusing him of the murders and putting fear into him. That if he wouldn't talk to him, 
been said was the day in the chambers when we were speaking to the doctor when we asked the doctor what his opinion was and he said and I believe it's on the records that he said his opinion as a doctor no person under the influence of any drug or on a methadone should be deliberating in any jury well it's not quite what he said but what he did say is recorded fully and is also incorporated again in your lawyer's uh, motion to the court today. You're not quoting him uh, accurately. He didn't say that at all, all right? But what he did say is a matter of record. Go ahead, what else? Continue. I feel that a lot of things have been hidden in this trial, and all I've asked, and you said from the beginning you would give me a fair trial. And I feel I haven't been given a fair trial. You said you would go by the law. Another thing that's been hidden is juror number 11 approached my family three times. Something that was told to my lawyer, my lawyer told my family, stay away from him. And he asked to make a deal with my family. Your Honor, I'm innocent of these murders. I have no anger for the families for what they're saying or what they think of me because they have been misled and they have been deceived by Mr. Tolte. I'm innocent of these crimes. Thank you, Your Honor. The advisory panel and myself absolutely unanimous in what we felt would be a fair sentence. I've never had that experience before, but uh, we're all in accord with respect uh, to the sentence that the law requires be meted out in this particular situation. And all sentences will be for your three convictions under Bronx Indictment 4978 of 91, each for uh, murder in the second degree under the first count of that indictment relating to the death of uh, Shamiro Bello. The court imposes an indeterminate sentence, the maximum of which shall be for the term of your natural life. <coughs> the court imposes a minimum term of 25 years, said term to run consecutively to the sentences you are now doing under New York County Indictment 14598 of 90 and Bronx County Indictment 793 of 89, and the said defendant is committed to the State Department of Correctional Services until released in accordance with the law for your conviction under the second count relating to the death of Lisa Rodriguez. The court imposes an indeterminate uh, term, the maximum of which shall be for the term of your natural life, and the court imposes a minimum term of 25 years, said term to run consecutively to the sentence imposed today on the count one of the same indictment and the said defendant is committed to the state uh, department of correctional services until released in accordance with the law for your conviction on the count three of the same indictment relating to the death of jessica guzman the court imposes an indeterminate sentence the maximum of which shall be for the term of your natural life, and the court imposes the court imposes a minimum term of 25 years, said term to run consecutively to those uh, sentences already imposed under counts one and two, 
and the said defendant is committed to the State Department of Correctional Services until released in accordance with the law. Give him the right to appeal. Alejandro. So that is 75 to life in this case, consecutive to the 5 to 10 you're already doing. You have 30 days in which to do so, and if you are with those funds, and you so inform this court, this court will see to that we receive a copy of the proceedings today, and that to be assigned counsel. However, Mr. Sachs, will you remain as counsel for the next 30 days? Yes. Until the defendant's right to appeal has expired. Okay, thank you. I've also advised him of his right to appeal the judgment and sentence of the court. Thank you, Mr. Sack.